brains. Welcome back to Lizard of Doom. I am Max. And with the release of Age of Sigma 4.0, my fantasy pickle is being tickled. So I wanted to try Spearhead, the new way of playing Age of Sigma, like Combat Patrol, you buy one starter box and you can play a game. The Sons of Bayamat Gargant one is just three giants. That's not that many miniatures. They may be big miniatures, but I enjoy painting a slightly larger scale than a lot of tiny dudes. However, I have been binge watching The Walking Dead, trying to finish it for the third time in my life, and I am nearly there, I've nearly got it. So zombie flesh is in my brain at the moment, so I wanted to do something a little different. I've been looking at my mini factory and other STL areas to get stuff from, and they don't really have what I'm looking for. All the zombie like giants or necromancer big things don't look like the Warhammer Gargants, these big fat rotund guys. So I've been looking for something like that. And I haven't found any zombie ones that I like, but I found some ones that may do. So give me a little subscribe and tickle my like button, please. Thank you. Let's go. Sabretooth Collectibles on My Mini Factory. Now they have got some really, really nice fantasy STLs. Lots of different choices to choose from and different armies represented from the Warhammer universe. But they had the most Warhammer looking gargantuans, not gargants, no, and this was the one I would choose, the slave giant. Now he's meant to be an emaciated, enslaved kind of being rather than a zombie, but I thought the way it looked like he was emaciated here and that he had lost weight and his skin was flapping could look like the body was degrading and he was rotting and he's got these cuts and everything all over him. And he's got one hand outstretched like a zombie reaching for someone and he can't be trusted to hold a weapon so they've had to cut his arm off and then attach this boulder swinging device. So I thought, a zombie? Yeah, this could be. And it fits within the aesthetic of the Warhammer world. The big bulbous fat giants rotting away. So now I was on a quest to make them different. And you can see that this one, I have attached a spare left hand to his back with a bit of chain. Now that left hand came from a reflected version, which I'd replaced the hand with some giant bits from an old giant kit I bought about 10 years ago. And the spear on there is actually a Lord of the Rings troll spear. And you can see he's got the collar on as well. And this one has got a weapon from the actual official giant kit, but is also peppered with arrows. Now you can see that I haven't done the special headgear one. Oh, but wait a minute. Yes, I have. I'm not just doing the spearhead. I'm doing a fourth with this hook made from ogre bits. And this is going to be because if I do do a full army of these, I would want four and I don't want to have to come back and paint one later. And I also printed some bases. These are some like fantasy city rubble and I clipped some bricks off. You can see bits missing where I wanted their feet to go. I'll link these as well as the giants in the description below. I primed them in a disgusting death rattle green from Colorforge. This is a disgusting nurgly kind of color. And then I do something a little insane. La Sponge is back and La Sponge is using AK Laser Magenta and slapping it splotchily all over the giant. Now this looks like an insane move at this point. Something a crazy person would do when he knew he had to get these painted in 48 hours and that is indeed what it was. This was to get a mottled bruised effect because I'd be going back over with army painted necrotic flesh from their airbrush paints range, smoothing it all out, blending it all in making this look like a bruised, rotting corpse. Because I want this to be in a quite hot setting and the decay might look bruisey and weird. Then I went back in with some zombie flesh from the same range of airbrush paints from Army Painter just to do little highlights on top of all the shoulders. This was the final step to the colors in the zombie flesh. And then I do something a little bit more interesting, weird for this stage now. I wanted to make it look like it was decaying and dirty, but like the dirt was coming from the zombie and wasn't on the zombie. So I decided to do a layer of very thin streaking grime now before I'd painted everything else. Because everything else on this miniature is not decaying, just the zombie. And I'd work some pure streaking grime into the recesses and grubby little bits stippling to create texture. When I removed very gently from the surface of this model, because if you do rub too hard, especially on airbrushed paint, it will come off because airbrushed paint goes on very, very thin indeed a little bit of cleaning and this thing would look more and more decayed as we went. 
Once that was done, it was back to the laser magenta just to reinforce them gums with the teeth coming out there. And then I would mix some beige red from AK in a 50-50 mix with the laser magenta just to highlight up those gums with more of a fleshy color, not leaving them so kind of neon pink, but still very stand out and matching the bruising as a color palette. This would tie it all in quite nicely. Then I'd use Steel Legion Drab as a base for the teeth and the fingernails, then highlight with Zandri Dust and Ushabti Bone. That's quite a standard way to do this on the teeth, just layering up. But on the nails, I had something a little bit more interesting to do. With the nails, I would highlight in kind of like a streaky manner like this, leaving little thin brush strokes. This is the top highlight of Ushabti Bone. I wouldn't go any higher than this. I wanted it to be dull and dirty and gross. I coloured the eye with some Fenrisian Grey, a nice blue misty dead colour and then mixed that 50-50 with some Vallejo Black to leave a misty pupil like they were kind of a bit blind and the eyes were decaying also. With the bruised nasty zombie flesh done we will come back to it in a little bit and do a bit more gore but it's time to move on to the rest of the miniature. I then painted everything else on the model black because this would be the base colour for most of the other parts, especially the metal which I was going to be doing in a kind of cast iron way. Something I've been enjoying on paint jobs over the last year or so on the channel, I like to do a little bit of cast iron when I can. And I thought the giant controlling these guys wouldn't be a master blacksmith making steel manacles, he'd be bashing together anything that would make it work. While the black dried on the metal, I decided to do the stonework. Over the black on the stonework, I would dry brush dark grey from AK, and then I would move on up to cold grey from Vallejo. These colours are perfect for this kind of work, and it's good to build slowly. Look, I'm using my Lizard of Doom texture palette, available at lizardofdoom.com, to get the perfect amount on my brush here. It seems like not a lot's coming off, but that's because I wanted very little on there, so I could work it. I could really get in there and take a lot of time and build it up with as much control as I wanted till it looks grey. And then on with the highlights, the same thing applies. I'll be using very little on the brush, and this time instead of going round in circles up and down to catch all the edges, I'm just coming down from the top, just to catch the light coming down from the top on this bit of masonry. And once that is done, I can show you that I've done the same on the bases. But I want these bases to be in a jungle setting. I want them to be in the same world as my Apes of Rage videos I did a little while ago. So I'm using Dirty Down Moss in an interesting way. I'm going to use it the same way as I used the Dirty Down Rust on my Nurgle Gundam recently. And that is, bloody coat it in the stuff. Just get it everywhere. Get the whole thing covered with this because this is another reductive technique such as the streak and grime but where you need to use spirits for the streak and grime to be pulled back because it's an oil based medium this is water based and you can see the effect of this moss working as it dries now this is a lovely wonder product and you can see the slow texture start to come through and little speckles of a brighter green but when you reapply water to it those speckles brighten again more water added equals more brightness when using this product it's mostly dry now, so it's time to work and clean that up. It's very, very mossy. It's still a little bit wet in the middle there, but it needs to be a little less mossy so you can still see there's a city underneath there and it is not just completely green. And so I used some water on a cotton bud to bring it back. Once I had worked and worked pulling it back, we had something that looked like this. You can just about see the masonry through there and it's enough moss to show you that nature has retaken this jungle city. And we'll do a bit more work at the end with tufts and other planty things bringing it to life. But for now, it's on to that cast iron I mentioned earlier. Dark sea blue from AK is going to be the first colour. I'm experimenting with more AK paints in this paint job and enjoying them vastly. Much better consistency and finish quality than Citadel, in my opinion. This dark sea is a very, very dark blue, and it's a way to bring out the detail in this metal without making it look gray, because I don't want to make this look gray like the stone, so I'd move on then to anthracite gray from AK, which says gray, but is also another dark blue. This would be the same manner I did the stone, the other one's kind of all over, picking up all of the detail, but this one is just from the top down, catching the top edges to give it a little edge highlight over all of the metal. And once that was done, it's time to rust it up. This is medium rust from AK. Very, very watered down to a glazed consistency and allowed to pool in all the recesses. 
if this is going to be in a hot jungle city where these zombies are decaying and wandering around iron's going to rust it's going to degrade and get dirty with the rest of them so this is an easy quick way I could use the dirty down rust on here, but I feel like I want the zombie's body to be the main gross bit and the metal areas to be just a little bit degraded in comparison. Then for the cloth, I felt it needed some texture. So I built up mixing Vallejo chocolate brown with Vallejo black, mostly black to start with and building up towards chocolate brown through layers until it was pure chocolate brown at the end. But I wanted to use the sponge to add a lot of texture, like it was some kind of I don't know, sack material, rough cloth. This wasn't a very well-maintained loincloth or a luxury one at that. And as I went up the layers, I would have to be more and more precise, cutting the sponge down to thin little shards of sponge. This meant I could get in all the tight areas and keep adding highlights as I went up and up through chocolate brown. Now for the fun bit, the bit I have waited for, the gore, Whoa, brains. Blood for the blood god, the technical paint from Games Workshop. This looks like blood, especially if you get it on your hands, but what I'm doing here is putting a thick layer of it in the recess and then using a wet brush to stipple it outwards, creating a gore effect spreading from the wound. This makes it thinner, makes it a little bit more orangey, and it looks like real gore and blood. Then I would stipple and reinforce the kind of inner bit near where the wound is. This wound being where the manacle has rubbed on the zombie's wrist as the master of these zombies has chained them up to control them. But there are other slashes and gashes all over this zombie as well. And if you've just giggled at the word gash, congratulations, you're as childish as me. You can see the effect on this slit here. Don't giggle at that one either and also on his wrist. It's a good effect. I, I like this gore effect and I was gonna go mental with it. This was going to be all over the zombies. They were gonna be grim and gross and I've used it to great effect, I feel. Look at this one. This one is in bad, bad shape. He is bleeding from all kinds of orifices. I would go to an even further extent on other ones, like the one with the metal helmet had screws on the top of the head. So I wanted to make it look like blood was pissing out of that helmet, like those screws had gone right into his head and caused severe injuries as his flesh wobbled around inside that helmet. But now for the base. These were the tufts I would use. I even dug out some old army painter ivy that they don't make anymore. And I wanted to try these out from Gamergrass. These are little laser cut printed leaves. And I wanted to see if for the effort and time you put into them, were they worth it? It seemed like a quick way to make this jungle based rather than forest based. Add some of these ferns, some of these monstera plants, and then it would look more jungly than just foresty. All you have to do is pop them up very carefully and bend them into shape. I thought if this works, this could be like a nice little addition to the arsenal. And to be honest, for the time and effort that goes into them, I think these things are pretty damn good. If you're after some quick jungle bases, it's six pounds a pack, which feels expensive, but I'd do it. So thank you to my Patreons for supporting me. I have gone part time in my day job and I'm now trying to focus on this. So your support is needed more now than ever. If you are someone who's watched my channel for a while and likes the content and has thought about supporting in the past, but couldn't quite justify it, I need you more now than ever. Maybe this is your first video, but you're like, this boy's good. Check out the Patreon, shablam, help support the channel. It's very much appreciated. And if you don't wanna do that, subscribe, make sure you leave a comment because it does boost the algorithm. Maybe we could just leave the comment brains and get a zombie horde going in the comment section. But now let's have a look at the reveal shots and a little bit of lizard lore from the Wizard of Doom. Deep in these jungles are many horrors. There are ape-like demons skulking in the shadows. There are many lost cities though, and today I will tell you of the lost city of Fortine. Fortine, once a prosperous ancient city, is now in ruin. Attacked by giants, mega gargons, towering over the temples of the city, smashing and bashing and crushing people beneath their feet. But once they had taken over the city, they realized that even the mightiest can fall to the smallest of Sigmar's creatures. The simple mosquito spread infection 
to the smaller Gargans. They were not big and strong enough to fight off this curse that Sigmar had placed on them for destroying his beloved city. Oh, the Mega Gargans still stand, but the smaller ones have all turned into these fetid, disgusting creatures, gouged forwards into battle by the biggest damn necromancer your boy's ever seen. This giant towers over his smaller, but still incredibly large minions, and drives them forwards. These horrific creatures feel no pain as they march forwards into our troops. They have to be gagged to stop them devouring our troops on the spot. But after the battle, their restraints are removed, and they are allowed to gorge on the flesh of men. Thank you all for watching guys leave a like for the like throne and a comment for the algorithm gods remember it is not a pile of shame it is a pile of future fun see you next time kids peace